It's moving day, so what better time than now to talk about hitching? That's right, let's check it out. This is a video we've been wanting to put together for a while. Even though we kind of covered hitching in our camp breakdown and setup video, we wanted to make a separate dedicated video because it's a pretty important topic. We get asked a lot actually about it, mm -hmm. so why not do it? We're gonna do a full <laughs> hitching up and unhitching. And it worked out great because Reese, who made our current hitch, we had the Reese 27K as a Ford branded accessory put in when we bought the truck. Well, they reached out to us to see if we wanted to try out their new M5 27K hitch. You would get rid of our old scratched up one and get a new one, sure. <laughs> we weren't looking for a new hitch. We liked our hitch, but we thought we yeah. would give this one a shot because it yeah. had some cool features that we were excited about. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna show you some features that are new on this hitch compared to our old one. From the head down, it's pretty much the same. It's a box with two legs on it and you can adjust up and down. You have four inches of a total adjustment up and down on the hitch. Most of the changes are gonna be in the head and then we'll show you those once we get to the hitching part. Yeah, and we have a short drive today from one Florida Key to the next Florida Key. <laughs> yeah. So it's about a 45 minute drive. So we thought perfect timing. Yeah, good day to do this. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna be filming our are unhitching after eight hours of driving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just pop the tailgate down here and show you real quick. The bottom half, other than cosmetic changes, is pretty much the same. They were both steel construction powder coated. Our particular hitch is designed for the Ford puck system. The bottom half will be different if you have a different puck system, but they will have the right attachment legs for whatever type of truck you have. One thing I like about this hitch is it's heavy. Now I know some people don't like heavy hitches because they take them in and out of the bed, we don't. Our stays in here all the time. Your back didn't like it the other day though. My back didn't like taking the old hitch out, which we'll put a little clip of that here. Yeah. <laughs> but it can be taken out by one person if you take it apart. That's not part of what we're gonna show you here, but it is possible. Let's talk about a couple of other features real quick that we'll show you once we hitch. So how does the height adjustment work compared to what we had before? They're actually exactly the same, uh, both our old and new. Am I blocking the view? If you look here, these, these are the leg pieces. I'm trying to line it up here. These are the leg pieces. And then this whole center section is separate and bolts to those leg pieces. The center section does have three levels of holes so that you can adjust it two inches either direction from the middle to the top and bottom. And you'll want to adjust both your hitch and your kingpin uh, generally, you're going to adjust your hitch first because that's easier, but both can usually be adjusted up and down a notch or two because you want to make sure you've got six inches of clearance between your bed rails and the bottom of your RV because as you're driving down the road, the truck and RV don't stay perfectly lined up. You know, they're going to be yeah. moving and stuff like that, particularly when you go in and out of gas stations. RV parks and things yeah. like that, things move. So if it's too tight, you're gonna hit and you're gonna damage your RV and or your truck. Chad is going to be putting together a whole blog post about the install of this. That is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not rocket science. You bolt it in, you follow the directions, but I did video the whole thing. So I'm gonna put that together and put that out on our blog. So if you're not subscribed to changinglanesrv.com, you should do that. You get more information there than you'll get just in these videos. Yes. A couple of quick notes about the, some changes that they've made to the head of this that I really like and some things that are the same. One thing that's the same is it's got a single jaw that wraps around versus two that go like this. And there's no way for it to kind of pop open this way. It's just a preference kind of thing. The single talon jaw in this is ready to receive, meaning I don't have to open it up, you know, before I'd have to get out of the truck, come back, pop it open. This, I don't have to do that. It just stays like it is. And the pin is going to both push it out of the way, hit a lock pin and close all in one motion. So I shouldn't have to do anything. Another thing that this has that our old one does not have is a red green indicator that will show you, hey, yes, you're properly latched. I again, like that. It, yeah. Again, it's not the end all be all and a pull test is the only way to really know for sure. And we're gonna get into that. If you know our friends, Tom and Cherie from enjoythejourney.life, Yes, and they're very experienced RVers, mm -hmm. but they just forgot a step one time. Yep. 
and had a little bit of an accident. Yeah, so, and they had a new hitch and stuff too, so. They do have a whole video, actually a series of videos about the RV smashes truck video, yeah. and that's what happens. It's the only video I've ever seen of an actual pit yeah, fail. Yeah, you've heard about where it before. The, where the RV drops on the truck. Well, they just happened to be filming because they just got their new momentum, so yeah. it was kind of like a new thing. Didn't really damage the rig at all, but it did damage the truck. Yeah, a few thousand dollars worth of damage and, to the truck. And I know, and we'll get into this, but I know there are some differences of opinions here and there about how to do the pull test or to yeah. do the pull test, but we'll tell you why it's important. Yeah. The big thing with the pull test is your hitch can have all the proper indications that it's hitched properly, just like Thomas Shree did that. The little pin popped out, said it was fine. A heavier duty hitch, one I have not used before, um, but nice little safety thing here. This little white pointer means that we are in the locked position. Uh, so safe to pull. You can also see the, the arm right there over. So like Cherie was saying, we need a checklist. The only way to know 100% for sure is to try pulling your RV with the brake set and see if it comes unhitched. Now, there is some, not controversy, but there's it's a difference of opinion, yeah. I think. If you look in the manual of this M5, it says to do a pull check. However, I make one modification to that. Some people will say a pull check is with the front gear down, and I don't like that. Yeah, then you're uh, running the risk of ruining your landing gear or damaging right. it or something if something goes wrong. Yeah, you know, you're pulling on it and it's gonna, it's gonna put tension on those front landing gears. So what we do is we put the landing gear like that far above the ground. That way it's not gonna pull or damage it, but if it comes off the pin, it's gonna drop onto the landing gear. And I think that that kind of covers any concerns about damaging your front jacks. Yeah, it gives, you the, well, it gives you the peace of mind of a pull check without the potential of damaging your front landing gear. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that and we'll show you. And I wanna say that no matter how experienced you are and how many times you've done this, always use a checklist. We yeah. always use the checklist and no matter what, if you think you've got this whole process down, you probably do, but you never know when your brain is going to miss something. Or so, a neighbor is going to stop by and start chatting your ear off and, yeah. you know, and then you lose track of where you were. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So go through your checklist before you take off because it's very important that you don't miss any steps. Yeah. And we've done this well over a hundred times, mm -hmm. hundreds of times probably. Mm -hmm. And even though I've got it in my head pretty well, I don't go on to the next segment until I refer to my checklist and I make sure that I at least check through them. Yeah. So what do you say we get to it? And just say, start, let's just go. start, I'm start ready this freaking hitching thing because we got to be out of here in half an hour. Oh, and we are leaving Sunshine Key RV Resort and heading up about 45 minutes to an hour to Fiesta Key mm -hmm. RV Resort. Let's get to it. I'm ready. Hope you down. Oh, thanks. As we talked about, I'm referencing our checklists. And those are available on our blog. Mm -hmm. We'll have a link below. If you watched our full camp breakdown and setup video, you know we've got checklists for T24 the night before, the day before, T12 the night before, and T0 the morning of. Right. Uh, so now we're on to the hitching checklist, the fourth and final checklist. So let's just go through them here. First of all, all the other checklists are complete. That's the first <laughs> check. We call it departure checklist, interior complete, T24, T12, T0. If you want to see this stuff, watch that other video. Mm -hmm. Slides and awnings are in. Stair and handrails stowed. The forward bay is closed and latched. Yep. Pin lock removed. Let's go get that. One thing you'll see down here is this little disc. It's just like a nylon disc. It's called a lube plate, so that way you don't have to get grease all over this. Just one of these is all you need. This is a little pin lock we have just for extra security. You know, if a repo man comes and wants to take our RV. No. <laughs> or somebody wants to steal our RV. These are really good if you're storing your RV. I don't think we probably need this, but it's just a peace of mind. You know, mm -hmm. why not? All right, the next thing is to go to tow height or hitch height. Our particular leveling system has one button we push that will put the RV back into the same configuration it was when we unhitched before we hit the auto level button. You know, again, this is our RV. If your RV doesn't have this, then you want to basically pull all your jacks up except your front and get your front about where you think it might be to hitch up. So let's go do it. Hitch height. And you can see it's pulling the rear ones up. 
and then it will probably jack the front up. So as you can see, all four, the middle and rear jacks are up and the front jacks came up to about where it thinks it should be for hitching. Uh, we may have to make some adjustments and we're gonna stop anyway at that point and talk about where you want that to line up on your hitch. Some other checks that we do are in the truck. Tow haul mode, mirrors extended. GPMS is already on and I'm just gonna hang that up here. We got an anxious puppy. Daisy gets a little stressed out, which is why we put her in the truck. So she knows, hey, I'm already in the truck, I'm going. But yet she still thinks that somehow the truck is like she's gonna drive the truck away without us. I don't, yeah. she's a dog. She doesn't think a lot. Oh. We'll swap out our easy pass. If we're in the Northeast and we've got one easy pass for the truck only and one easy pass right. for the truck and RV, uh, we don't need that. Tailgate is already down. We're gonna back the truck up. We're gonna make sure that the pin box is at the proper height to hit the hitch. Basically, what you want to do is the hitch articulates like this. You want your pin box to kind of run up like this and ride its way up on top. You don't want it to come down like this. You don't want it to be up here anywhere. You want it to just barely ride up and on. That way the pin slides in, doesn't come down because you don't want what's called a high pin situation where everything is connected. It's in there, but it's sitting on top of the jaw. Bad news. Ready to do it? Yep, let's do this stuff. This is a lot, a lot of situations where we've got to kind of squeeze between something and back. So we'll see how this goes. Don't want to hit the motorcycle. I'm going to have to go forward just a touch. Now we're pretty good right there. You can see that we're a little bit high here. We want this to be down a little bit so it can ride up on. So I'm going to lower it just a touch. Better to be just a touch low than too high. That looks about right. And we're going to just back it right on and see how this ready to receive thing works. Did it feel any different? Not really. It should be noted that this is the first time we're using this new hitch. Mm -hmm. And I just realized why it was probably a little bit lower is I didn't have air in the airbags there off. The hitch height thing isn't always gonna be perfect. In fact, it's usually not gonna be perfect. And I was also a little bit crooked, so the hitching process was a little bit rougher than normal because there's that sign there and I had to wiggle back and sometimes it's difficult to get it perfectly lined up. But the way this is designed, you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to get it close and then get it on there. So now you see we have green here and this is lined up. Oops, that's not what I'm gonna do. That popped right out of there, I'll have to fix that. What? It's just the retainer thing for uh -oh. this so we don't lose it. So we'll worry about that later. I always remember there are three things to hook up in here. One is this pin. Next is the breakaway cable. I like this little bungee thing here, a little stretchy, slinky thing. It's a little bit better than just a straight cable. It's not gonna get caught on things. Now you'll notice in the directions, they talk about connecting this down to like the base of the hitch, but I don't do that. I would prefer to connect it to the truck because what happens if some, for some reason the mount to the truck fails and the entire hitch comes out with the RV, this is not gonna get disconnected because it's going along with the whole thing. If this is attached to your hitch, now the whole thing is off and no brakes are being applied. So I always hitch this thing right here to the truck. That way it's connected to the truck and not the base of the hitch. Another quick note, when you buy one of these, if you get one of these, buy it with the pin that goes into the little box there. That's the part that pulls out. The reason being is it's a good idea to have an extra one of those because if you get some sort of crazy kids or vandals that decided it'd be fun to steal it and pull yours out and then you have no way to, to tow. So just have an extra one just in case, which we do. Another thing that we check is we make sure that we can see the jaw around the pin and I can see the bottom of the pin down here so that I know it's all the way in, it's not high pinned. And then the last thing, the last of the three things is the cable. 
the seven pin connector for lights and such. So you want to make sure that this isn't all wrapped up or tangled. It's just hanging here. It has plenty of room to, to slide around as you make turns. You also periodically want to get some electrical contact spray and make sure you clean out this and your pins so that they're clean. So we're going to leave the bed down right now while we do our pull check. I'm going to go back to our checklist here and make sure we're on track. Truck open hitch latch. We don't have to do that anymore with this new hitch because it's receiver ready which is cool. We've got that hitched up, backed on the kingpin. We visually checked that the kingpin lock bar is locked. We connected the electrical cord and the breakaway cable. Now we are on to the pull test. So let's show you how we do that. Turn this back on, down button, which pulls the jacks up. Now we've got both of these about an inch off the ground. You'll notice that one goes all the way down and the next one comes all the way down. So the, the trick is to let that one come all the way down, let the next one come all the way down about an inch off the ground, and then stop and then push them, push the down button, which will make them go up, and bring the other one back up. You just gotta play with it. Once you, once you mess with it, you'll kinda see how it works. But now you can see we've got this one is about an uh, inch and a half, and that one's about an inch off the ground, which is perfect. Our wheels are still chocked, even though we're gonna use our brake for this pull test. So let's just do it real quick and see how it goes. All right, so quick pull check, brake off, got it in drive. Also on the checklist is to make sure that the trailer brake gain is set. We like ours at about 8.5 is where we've tested it. So I'm just gonna hold the brake right here. Again, your brake controller may be different. I'm gonna hold the brake, which will lock the trailer brakes, which is good even though we're hitched. And I'm gonna to try to pull forward just a little bit. Not gonna hit the gas, I'm just basically letting off of the brake to put some pressure on the hitch. I can see we're not going anywhere, we're pulling it. Now I'm gonna go back to neutral, let the pressure off, back to park, put the brake back on, and we're ready to unchalk and roll after we do the rest of the checklist. Parking brake is set, retract all landing gear. So we've got one button for that, which is retract all. Close the tailgate. This part is very important. If you try to make a turn with the tailgate down, the tailgate will hit the RV and damage it. Let's remove and store the wheel chocks. Okay. Tara is stowing the chocks on the other side. Close all storage doors and lock them. We have RV locks on all of our baggage doors. We'll verify the lights via radio. Uh, now I'm basically just going to do a full walk around. I'm going to walk around the entire front of the thing. I'm going to look high. I'm going to look low. I'm going to make sure we didn't leave anything in the campground or underneath the RV. Make sure all the slides are in, all the things are latched, the ladders up. The whole RV, just walk, it around, walk around real yeah. quick. And then once we pull out, we still have to load Lucille into the garage. Yep. Next, I go stand behind the RV and we test the lights mm -hmm. because in the very beginning of our RV life, we had the right turn signal go out. So. We check them every time. We do. Let's do it now. Now I make sure that the lights are on, make sure the camera is working. TPMS is reading tires. I can uh -huh. see Tara here in the display. Ready to check? Ready to go. Commencing light checks. Brake. Left. Reverse. Check it to check. I'll watch the uh, driver's side. Yeah, watch driver's side and I'll watch for trailer swing and I'm just going to pull right to our right here and we can load up Lucille. It smells back here in these mangroves. <laughs> smells up here too. You've cleared the electrical post. All right, time to go load the seal.
couple of other quick things to chat about in regards to hitches that you might have questions on so we'll try to head those off if we don't cover them please comment below we'll be happy to try to answer let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of hitches one that's popular is a gooseneck now a gooseneck doesn't have a hitch per se but the kingpin itself is designed to come up to that level and go on to a ball where the hitch would be great option i think reese does make a gooseneck and it is actually the only one i think it's either lippert or grand design would certify on their rvs you know because it's really part of the frame the pin box is but the reese one is certified however it's rated at 20k and I prefer our hitching system to be overrated versus rated right at our GVWR, which is 20K. We hit 20,001 pounds and we're technically overrating it, so over, overloading it. So, Reese, if you ever make a 27 or 25K gooseneck, we'd love to try it out. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be one less thing, you know, you don't have that thing in the bed, it'd be really cool. Another option that people seem to be really fond of is the Anderson hitch. Now that's a really lightweight, like 30 pound hitch that's aluminum and it's kind of A-framed and people either love it or hate it. I wouldn't say we hate it, but we've not had... We don't had, really know anything about it. We don't really know. We don't have any experience with it. We do have experience with Anderson Jack Blocks, same company, uh, but they make the little red cans that you might see in some of our earlier videos. We don't use those. For the those. Jack, jack stand. Yeah, it helps lessen your jack extension. We don't use those anymore because we broke nine of them. Yes. To Anderson's credit, they kept replacing the broken ones, but after nine, we're like, this is just not engineered properly. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be able to be rated at 6K, and we broke nine of them well below that 6K. 6K um, each. Yeah, 6K yeah. each block. We have a full-size eight-foot bed, and we can have a normal hitch. We can turn 90 degrees without trailer hitting the truck or anything like that, as you probably saw in our towing video. Now, short beds have a little bit of a situation where they can't do that, so it requires either a special hitch or a special pin box. I know they make ones called sidewinders. That might even be a Reese, I'm not sure. There are various options that basically what they do is when you're going to be in a turning situation, it slides the hitch back a little bit. And then when you pull back towing, it brings it back up between the axles. Again, that's just a rough sort of... Yeah. And we don't have any experience with that either, Yeah, obviously. no experience at all. So really have nothing to say about those other than if you have a short bed, you will probably require some sort of special hitch for a fifth wheel. Another thing that we get asked quite a bit about, as long as we're on the subject of hitching and pin boxes, is our pin box. We have the Lippert Flex Air, which has the airbag and the shock and the rubber pad. It's been a great pin box. The airbag and everything, you can, you can see it working back there. It's always dampening motion between the RV and the truck. So it's doing some work. Oh, let's see, how long do we have left? 33 minutes 33 until minutes. we get to our next destination. Long travel day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, we'll see you at Fiesta Key where we do the unhitching part, which is much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're here, we're in the spot. Parking brake is set on the truck and nothing else is done, so. Step one is we want to chalk the wheels, so okay. let's do that. All chalked up? Chalked up. All right, so next what we're going to do is put the front landing gear down and get pressure off the hitch, just off of the hitch a little bit. So we're going to raise it up until it just comes off the hitch a touch, like that. You hear the airbags kicking in. And tailgate down. generally just hang it over the back of the tailgate so when we pull out it'll just drop so you're awfully noisy yeah what I've learned is to get the hitch off easily is to put it in neutral and just let it settle so I go in take the parking brake off put it in neutral let it settle put it back in park and then it usually takes all the pressure off of the hitch unhook our breakaway cable and this is going to be a little bit different on this new hitch. First of all, i got to fix that. So I've got up here, pull out and back. That was actually pretty easy. Our old hitch, you had to pull it straight out. And that actually unhitched it. 
but this one you rotate the whole thing so you have a little bit more leverage i like that so now we just pull the truck out So now we basically just push auto level and set up camp. Put the pin lock back on. That's it. You can see our auto levels going on now. When it's done, we put the stairs down and we set up camp. And you can check that out in our breakdown setup video. That's right. This thing will give us a green light once it's done, but thank you for watching. That's Lifting with my legs, not my back. <laughs> Trying to at least you won't uh, see us all cranky pants. I'm already cranky pants, let's this, face it. This is true. <laughs> let's just pop the uh, truck. The, this is a tailgate. I know it's a tailgate. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you want some help? <laughs> there you go. Short legs. That's going to leave a bruise on my butt. <laughs> I mean, you're pretty and all, but this new hitch is kind of pretty too. Can you imagine if we had the blue and black paint uh, job? Oh. Then it would like be... Should we get a new RV to match our hitch? Bottom half of the it's hitch. Right there. It's, like it's out. Curling. It's tickling me. Yeah, imagine how that feels <laughs> on my face. Chad will be putting together a whole blog post about the about what? The install. <laughs> okay. Still pull check. Probably. <laughs>